Welcome to Electron Line. Next, we want to find the moment of inertia of a triangle. And then we realize that the triangle can be positioned in two different ways. We can have the triangle like this, and then we try to find the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis. And of course, we realize that most of the area, as it would be if we had an object with mass, most of the mass is close to the axis of rotation, so therefore we expect a smaller moment of inertia relative to the x-axis. We could also have the triangle situated like this with most of its area or most of its mass farther away from the x-axis. So even though these triangles have the exact same area, just having them situated differently, you realize you're going to end up with a different moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of this one relative to the x-axis is expected to be larger. The question is, how much larger? What are the moments of inertia? Well, we're going to start with the top triangle first, and then in the next video, we'll do the bottom triangle to see how they differ. So we're going to find the moment of inertia of this triangle. We already have a small little area element called dA, which has the width x and the height dy. The equation here is the equation y equals mx plus b from algebra, but the slope in this case is going to be a minus slope a negative rise over run, so minus h over b times x plus the y-intercept of h. We're going to need that equation solved in terms of x, so that is right here, x is equal to b minus b over h times y. So now we're ready to find the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis. So i sub x is equal to the integral. We're going to integrate over all these little area elements from y equal 0 to y equals h, from 0 to h, of the distance squared, that would be y squared, times the area element dA. Plugging in what dA is equal to, this becomes equal to the integral from 0 to h of y squared, and dA is going to be x times dy. Here is where we're going to need to find the value of x in terms of y, because we have a differential as dy, so we're going to plug in that value right there. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to h of y squared times what x is equal to in terms of y, which is b minus b over h times y times dy. And now we realize we're going to end up with two different integrals, so let's separate them. This is equal to the first integral. We'll have the, the constant b taken out the integral sign. We have 0 to h for the limits. And then we have y squared dy, that's our first integral. I have a minus, the constants are b over h, times the integral also from 0 to h. And now we have a y times a y squared, that's a y cubed, times dy. So those two integrals can be readily integrated. So this becomes equal to, the first one becomes b times y cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to h, and the second one becomes minus b over h times y to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 0 to h. Of course, when we plug in the lower limits, we get 0. When we plug in the upper limits, we get the following. On the first one, we'll get 1 third b times h cubed minus and notice that actually would be the moment of inertia if this had simply been a rectangle of width b and height h. So we subtract from that this quantity right here, which is 1 fourth b over h times h to the fourth power. And you can see that this h will cancel out one of those. So this ends up being 1 third bh cubed minus 1 fourth bh cubed. Common denominator would be 12. That gives us 4. So this would be equal to 4 over 12 bh cubed minus 3 over 12 bh cubed, which is equal to 1 twelfth bh cubed. But now let's solve it in terms of the area of that rectangle, or triangle, I should say, not a rectangle, triangle. So this is equal to, now we know that the area of that triangle would be 1 half the base times the height, so it would be 1 over 6 
times 1 over 2 base times the height, and then we have left an h squared, and so this becomes equal to 1 sixth the area of the triangle times h squared, and that would be the moment of inertia of that triangle situated with the base against the x-axis and finding the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis. So it's one-sixth the area times h squared. And let's write that down up here. So we have one-sixth the area times h squared as being the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis for the triangle situated like that. Now we'll do this again on the next video on the second example where we have now turned the triangle upside down to see what we get this time. And that's how it's done.